This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is 6 o'clock and this morning Portland's mayor is ready for change. After police declared a riot on New Year's Eve, we're going to break down what his office is planning to cut down on crime. And after its building was damaged during protests last year, the Oregon Historical Society tapped a local artist to paint history on plywood. Before we get to that, though, Chris McGinnis joins us live at home for your forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, uh, Galen. A, a new year, the same old weather, though, right? We are going to get really wet today, so let's get to it. Checking out the radar right now, live sweep out of uh, our Portland radar up in the West Hills. Uh, showing some steady rain now working its way into Columbia, Washington, and Yamhill counties. So in the metro area, we're about to get wet and stay wet for most of the day. In fact, the entire day today. Let's go ahead and show you what uh, the progress of this rain is over the last three hours. And you can see a big batch of wet weather offshore. So the rain will increase in coverage and intensity as we go throughout the day today. And I think the heaviest rain probably falls a bit later on this evening. There's a big train of moisture offshore that will sweep through the region throughout the day today. It's going to be windy at the coast. There's a wind advisory in effect for the valley. And in the Cascades, winter weather advisories for heavy snow expected today. 50 last check at PDX with a light south breeze out there and elsewhere across the region. We're 47 Beaverton, big picture across the state. Nobody terribly cold this morning. Burns right now checking in with 25 in Baker City. 21. Here's a look at the plan for Saturday. Again, it's dry at PDX right now. The gale and the rain is moving in quickly, and it will be with us the rest of the day with highs in the 50s. The wind also ratchets up a bit later on this afternoon. We'll take a look at all of that and your very wet seven-day forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you so much. This morning, city and county leaders are denouncing two nights of violence in downtown Portland, including a riot on New Year's Eve. Police have arrested three people so far, and as KGW's Mike Benner reports, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler is ready to crack down. I condemn anyone who engages in violence or criminal destruction, no matter what their ideology. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler not mincing words following two consecutive nights of violence in the core of downtown Portland. Lawlessness and anarchy come at great expense and with great risk to the future of our community. On Wednesday and Thursday nights, authorities say, dozens of people vandalized buildings by spray painting them and breaking windows. We're told they launched Molotov cocktails and fireworks at the federal courthouse and justice center. Responding law enforcement officers even came under attack themselves. All of this coming after a summer of similar behavior. We need more accountability, and we need to hold people responsible for their criminal conduct. On this first day of 2021, Mayor Ted Wheeler is committing to three things. First, he is asking law enforcement to meet with him to address the ongoing violence in Portland and across the state. Second, he wants the state legislature to come up with stiffer penalties for people who repeatedly engage in vandalism and destruction. And lastly, he wants the people convicted of the vandalism and destruction to meet with the employees and owners of the businesses damaged. To the people who commit acts of van vandalism or violence, I have this to say, please stop. Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps on his first day on the job denounced the violence. So too did Police Chief Chuck Lavelle and Sheriff Mike Reese. The violence last night was criminal and reprehensible. It was a focused attack on the Justice Center. We should be clear about what this was last night. It was about violence and criminal destruction, period. Mayor Wheeler agrees, adding that he sympathizes with the business owners who are left to clean up the mess. It's time to push back harder against those who are set on destroying our community. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. Meanwhile, Portland police detained five people for robbing a marijuana dispensary. This was yesterday in northeast Portland by Sandy and 28th. A car chase eventually led officers to Halsey and Broadway, where the suspects tried to get away. Police, though, locked down the area until they found them. Police in Salem are also making some arrests at a rally against COVID restrictions. A group gathered in front of the Capitol yesterday afternoon, and they marched to Governor Kate Brown's home, calling on the state to let restaurants and gyms reopen in more areas. At one point, police declared it an unlawful assembly. Counter protesters also showed up. Things got tense on both sides, but police kept them from clashing. Now this comes as Oregon reports close to 1,500 new COVID cases. We've seen cases drop recently, but those numbers spiked again over the last two days. 
The state also reported 13 more people died. The hope now, though, is that a vaccine can help end this pandemic. It will be a while before everyone gets a shot and rollout in Oregon has been pretty slow, but state leaders promise it's going to ramp up. Here's KGW's Kristen Severance. New numbers show the state has delivered nearly 188,000 doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, but just under 39,000 doses have been administered. It's not easy because we're it's almost like building a ship to, as we're going down the stream. Dr. Joe Sullivan with the Oregon Health Authority helped come up with the state's plan to roll out the vaccine. Why is Oregon, you know, so slow when it comes to administering this vaccine? Well, let me start out by saying that um, Oregon, as it's been getting its vaccine, has been allocating out to providers the vaccine. Dr. Sullivan said once the vaccine is sent to facilities, it's up to them to get shots in arms. He said there are several reasons for the delay. It's obviously a brand new vaccine. There are storage concerns like Pfizer needing ultra cold storage. There are side effect concerns, especially with healthcare workers, social distancing to take into account at facilities giving the vaccine and the holidays. I just heard yesterday of one um, a hospital that was going from 500 a day to 2,500 a day. So I think the numbers going forward are going to be much, much better as far as how much vaccine once we get past these holidays. The state's own dashboard shows less than one dozen shots administered on December 25th. But when you look at the dashboard and you see, you know, 11 shots, just 11 shots given on Christmas Day, I mean, is that acceptable? I mean, it's, it's hard to say, you know, each provider is making their dis own decisions about how to give this vaccine out. And of course, uh, we at OHA want as many vaccines in arms as possible. I will tell you that I've been communicating with hospitals and I know the pharmacy partners who are working in a skilled nursing facility tell us that they are working as fast as they can and we'll encourage them to continue to do so to get through uh, this first 1A prioritization group. It's important to point out this is happening in other states too. State health agencies have had to handle PPE, contact tracing, testing, and now the vaccine. But a new report by Bloomberg shows Oregon once again near the bottom of the list when it comes to administering the vaccine. Is that frustrating for you to, to be at the bottom, to be behind you know a lot of other states? Uh, of course, you know, we, we would like to be better, but we're doing this in a, th we think we're, th we're doing this in a thoughtful way and we know what our work is ahead of us as far as engaging other partners to be more successful going forward. And I think that uh, you and others in Oregon will see our numbers increasing quickly over this next couple of weeks. That was Christian Severance reporting. Now, a healthcare worker in eastern Oregon is recovering after a severe allergic reaction to the Moderna vaccine. This was at Wallawa Memorial Hospital in the town of Enterprise. The employee went to the hospital after getting their first dose of the vaccine this week. Health officials, though, say these kinds of reactions are very rare. It appears that severe allergic reactions with either of these COVID-19 vaccines uh, are pretty uncommon. Uh, they were not seen in the clinical trials. Now we are getting some reports of it, and it's something we're paying attention to, uh, but the risk appears to be very low. It's really important to remember this is the only severe vaccine reaction publicly reported so far in Oregon, and that's out of more than 44,000 doses given in Oregon. The vaccines can cause mild to moderate symptoms like pain in the arm, fever, chills, tiredness, headache, but ultimately they protect you from COVID. The Oregon Health Authority says a notification about the state's contact exposure app was a mistake. You might have seen this pop up on your phone yesterday. Oregon Health Authority says Apple accidentally turned the app on for iPhone users, but it's still not ready yet. A pilot program with OSU ended yesterday. Oregon officials did not say when they plan to actually enable the app again. Washington State launched its version of the app in early December. My thanks to all the men and women of the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office for absolutely the amazing work each of you do every single day. God bless all of you. Please take care of each other. And I'll be 10-7. 
That's Clackamas County Sheriff Craig Roberts signing off for the final time. He officially retired on New Year's Eve after 16 years as sheriff and four decades in law enforcement. Former Under Sheriff Angela Brandenburg takes over for Roberts after being elected sheriff in November. All right, we'll still ahead this morning how to get your finances in check for the new year. If 2020 hasn't been kind to your bank account, we're going to share some ways to cut down on debt and boost savings.